116 together on your hymnal. 216. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. I'm dwelling in Beulah land. Let's stand together as we sing 216 together on that first. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. And I know the sin of a I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. On the manna from a bountiful supply, for I am dwelling in Beulah land. Far below the storm of doubt, the world is reaching. The man and battle of the enemy with sin. Safe am I within the castle of God's word retreating. Nothing that can reach me is your land. I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky. Praise God! I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh yes, I'm missing all the manna from a bountiful supply. For I am dwelling in Beulah land. On the last view, we hear the works of God. I see the contemplation. I see the way his plan dwelling in the spirit here I learn of salvation. Gladly will I carry in Beulah I'm living on the mountain underneath the flawless sun. Praise God! I'm drinking at the fountain. that's a good place to be isn't it I hope you're living in Beulah land and uh, good to see you back in church this evening looking forward to a wonderful wonderful time together tonight let's bow in prayer together shall we Lord thank you for Sunday evening thank you Lord for the faithfulness of thy people to be here tonight and Lord we bow here at the beginning of the service and we ask you to meet with us this evening please the best we know how we're yielding ourselves to you at the beginning of this service, Lord, may these songs we sing and the messages that are contained therein, the special of the choir, Lord, the testimonies of the teenagers, the message from your word, the giving of our tithes and offerings, Lord, use all of that to minister to our hearts tonight. Uh, conform us to the image of your Son because we were in church this evening. Lord, may Christ be lifted up. May he be exalted tonight in our midst. We love you. We pray you'll meet with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated.
333 in your hymnal 333 three, three. I have found a friend in Jesus he's everything to me he's a lily of the valley 333 three, three. let's sing that first together I have found a friend in Jesus he's everything to me he's a parish of 10,000 to my soul the lily of the valley in him alone I see all I need to bless and make me holy Sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my faith. He tells me every hair on him to roll. Hallelujah, he's a lily of the valley, a bright and morning star. He's a fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my griefs have taken, and all my sorrow borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty star. I have all for him forsaken, and all my idols for from my heart, and now he hates me by his power. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan sent me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. Hallelujah, he's a lily of the valley, a bright and morning star. He's a fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. And sweeping up to glory, I'll see his blessed face. Where rivers of delight shall ever roll. Hallelujah, he's a lily of the valley, a bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Well, our teens were at Camp Victory this past week, and we want to hear from them tonight and a little bit what the Lord did in their heart and their life uh, during this week of camp. I think they had, I was looking at the Facebook page there, and I think he said there were well over 200 uh, teenagers there this week at camp and uh, many decisions made and uh, so and we had a uh, brother Jay uh, took the teens down and stayed the week there and he went down on Wednesday and uh, stayed Wednesday Thursday Friday and then because of some uh, car trouble on Andy's uh, part the wheel that froze up there for him uh, they spent most day on Saturday down there too and uh, so uh, and then his fact his vehicle still down there and uh, they'll find out tomorrow what kind of repairs it's going to need and then 
we'll have to go down and get it and bring it back home. So, but they had a great week, I think, and uh, I want to hear from the teenagers. So if you went to camp, and uh, even if you were down there with them, and you want to give a testimony, Brother Jay or Brother Andy, uh, you come on. The other ones who were at camp, Sarah was there, Rusty was there, James was there, Anastasia, come on, guys. Girls, step right up, step right up. Volunteer, be drafted, either way. And uh, have it come up. All right. And uh, you can sit in the front row of the choir if you want. And then when one's up, you know, someone else will be ready to roll, okay? Who's going to be first? All right. And uh, Amber and uh, Sarah Cato. Uh, went along as well, and of course they're in a church tonight, a uh, separate church, but next time they're in service, we'll hear from them, okay, and uh, we'll make sure that they get their chance to testify, and, uh, and I'm sure they'll want to do that, all right, okay, who's first? <laughs> right in the mic, okay? Okay, well, um camp was really fun. I had a really nice time. I'm so glad that Andy forced me to go. I didn't want to go. <laughs> so bad. I was making up excuses and, you know, reasons in here that I didn't want to go because God was really working on my heart. For a long time, I couldn't really sleep well or eat well. Even there, I was really, really couldn't keep any food down. Like, it was horrible. I was sick and stuff. So, um, the sermons were really, really powerful. Like, I cried, like I was on my knees crying. I was just letting everything out. I had to surrender and let God just completely take over. And I was so happy because on during that week, on, on a Wednesday night, I got saved. So I was really happy. And I was so happy because I immediately felt a change in my heart. And even my mom, she was really happy. And she was praying for me, for me to get saved. Christy too. So I felt a change in my heart. And I knew, I knew that God was really working on me that week. And I was so happy that the girls were really awesome. Sierra had me laughing the whole week. I could not stop. <laughs> Rusty too. I haven't heard him talk ever. And... <laughs> He talked for the first time, and then he would not stop talking. He would not stop. <laughs> but I had really fun. I want to go next year. I want to keep going as a counselor. I want to just, and also, I've surrendered my life to Christ, and I know that God wants me to be a Sunday school teacher. So I know what I want to do, and I know what I want to do for the Lord, and I want to keep going back, and I encourage the teens to go, or any grown-ups to go this week, because the preaching was powerful. The kids seeing 21, or was it 23? 21 kids, 21 teens got saved and surrendered their life to missions. And it was just awesome. I loved it. And that's it. That's it. I like going to camp because... Oh. I like going to camp because it was real fun. I liked all the games. And the preaching was real hard. And why that Wednesday night, that they didn't even have to preach because... The altar just kept on getting full, full of kids because they just sang the entire time and it pulled them all up there. And I like camp a lot because it showed me to read my Bible every day and to follow him a lot closer. Camp was a lot of fun. The games were awesome. The preaching was really good. Um, <laughs> they had a zip line, and first time ever I went on it, I was scared to death. <laughs> I got up there, I was shaking, and even when I was done, I was still shaking. I was like, <laughs> yeah, but like seeing all the kids up there, just going up there and getting saved, it was so awesome. Like, surrendering their lives to God, and yeah. it was just really cool. And like Rusty said, the David, one day they didn't even start preaching yet, it was just all the singing they did. It was one group that just started singing, and everyone just started flowing up to the altar. It was awesome. 
told me I could preach for about another hour, so <laughs> we might not get out of here. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> uh, no um, in real uh, seriousness, um, the Lord really touched my heart on Wednesday. Um, I haven't been all right with the Lord. I would be sitting there wanting to get out of church as fast as I could. That's not a good thing to say, but it's the God's honest truth. So, <laughs> uh, no, camp was really good, though. Um, the beds were awesome, for me at least. <laughs> um, so it, the, the games were fun, the food was good. Um, Brother Griffiths was amazing. If, uh, if you ever go down and you don't get something, there's something wrong. Because he preaches hard, Amen. real hard. Um, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that gets uh, said there that some preachers would be afraid to say in pulpits. And it just gets said down there because we only stand down there for a week. We don't have to. <laughs> he doesn't have to go with it all. <laughs> um, but, you know, I just want to thank uh, Jay for taking us down. Um, I know it's hard for him to drive. Um, and Andy for coming down, even though he had other things to do. I just want to thank you. And... Um, all the council and all everything that happened down there and uh, just want to thank uh, all the campers that went you know it touched my heart too um, I just want to thank uh, it everybody that prayed for us and uh, everybody that let us go to camp whoever set it up for us to go back to Camp Victory it was one of the best camps this year it was a lot of kids there are a lot more teens than it usually is. Um, so that's all I got to say. Yeah, hope you're all ready. Um, you know, first of all, I want to I want to kind of just uh, just follow what he just said. I want to thank everybody that. They really kicked in to, to allow these teams to go because this was, quite honestly, an amazing time. Um, I watched so I watched everybody. You know, kind of being a counselor, you have sort of a, a, a really an awesome perspective. You get to watch. We get to step back and watch how how God is moving in everybody's life. And it was, I can tell you, it was amazing. I am I am 48 years old, and this was probably the most emotional time that I've had in my entire life. You know, everybody, everybody, all these young kids so far have referred to, have referred to what happened on Wednesday night. <clears throat> Allow me to elaborate just a bit. We got into the service, and you know, there was a couple. There was, they had a couple skits that began the whole thing, and then we went into the singing. And after the first song, a a youth group, one of our the, the largest youth groups, stepped up there, and they began to sing. And from the moment the first young person opened their mouth. There was such an anointing in that place that fell over everybody, and it was so heavy that from that moment, literally within probably about a minute of them singing, the altar began to fill up, and people began to you know come with those going to the altar, and it just it went that way for two and a half hours, two and a half hours. I am, I got saved at 18 years old. I'm 47. I don't think I've ever cried so much in my entire life because the Holy Spirit was so heavy on everyone there. The minute I started recovering, I'd look at somebody else and I'd be drawn right back into it again. Amen. And the Holy Spirit just continued. I'm telling you, it was like it was a, just a way, it was like being on the ocean as the waves are washing up on the shore. And if you were anywhere there, you just got wet. You just kept getting wet, and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I thank everyone here. I don't know who who uh, came up with the fantastic idea to send me, <laughs> but um. That was a great idea. I, I think uh, more so for the kids than it was for me. And, and I say that um, with a little reservation. It was a fantastic time for me. But, you know, I think God used this period of time to kind of loosen me up. 
and let me have a lot of fr a lot of fun with these guys. Not just you know those with our youth group, but a lot with everybody. If you all haven't seen it, there's a picture going around um, that James has, and if you don't, you haven't seen it, he'll probably text it to you at some point. Uh, the, a group of kids got a hold of me, and they painted me literally. They wrote with colored markers and pens and everything else. Eyeliner ladies. I mean, they they colored me, and we had a blast. We absolutely just had a blast. You know, it was, there was times to lighten up, and there was times to have fun. But I'm going to tell you, when we stepped into the sanctuary every single night, God met us with a fervor that I have hey. seldom seen in my almost 20 some years of Christianity. Hey. And it was, it was sobering, hey. and it was humbling, and it gave me a hunger for God that I haven't had for so long. Hey. He restored, you know, the Bible says that He restores my soul. Hey. He leads me inside the still waters. He refreshes my soul. He restores me. And that's what God did this week to me. He refreshed me. He restored me. He gave me a newfound love, not just for Christianity in my walk, but for everyone here, all of you guys. I'm telling you, when I, when I walked in today, and I hope I don't get too emotional, but I, felt, I just felt a love for everyone in this building that I haven't felt for anyone in all of Christianity in a long time. You know, the Bible says there's a place in the Lord where the evil one cannot touch you. And we were there this, this past week. And so I want to thank everybody here. <laughs> Everyone that made this possible for all of us, you have done an gr incredible, incredible gifting to each and every one of us. Amen. So thank you. Amen. Okay. The night I got saved... Um, when we were going to bed and everyone was going to sleep, I got bit by a tree roach. It was gross and it was huge and I was freaking out, right? I don't know. Just listen. Um, so, <laughs> so it was crawling towards me going for another attack. I thought I was going to die. So I prayed and I was like, please, Lord, just please kill it. And it literally flipped over and immediately died. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So he immediately started answering my prayers right after I got saved. Okay, that's all. How do I follow that one? I don't know. Um, I wasn't there the whole week. I came Wednesday night, and you know, I came about five o'clock to I had dinner, and then the service, and that was the service where it was what they're saying. I mean. It was, it was pretty much amazing. I mean, you hear about those services, but to be in one where yeah. you just, you know Amen. the Spirit's there. Yeah. It's quiet. Yeah. And then the songs, the, the just regular songs we sing in church, but they sing it there and just something happens. Amen. And, um, I mean, we were right on the front row of it. And so I had the guy right on the front row. And it was just... It was it was amazing for like what what Jay said two and a half two and a half hour service of just testimonies and teens giving up and getting up and saying they got saved or um, just they're so thankful for Jesus Christ and just giving up and testifying and um, just incredible. Um, boy, it was it was great to see just to kind of step back and watch watch the campers, you know. Watch Sierra, man, she was popular down there. She had all these friends, and it was it was just fun. They all had a great time with the campers down there, and just watching them mingle with the other the other campers was was very um, it was it was a highlight for me to see. And and then Rusty, just all over the place. <coughs> we had swim time in the afternoons, and we'd go in the pool and rest of you would be, you know, just pop in the pool and he would have this thing he'd do, he'd go into the water and just go to random people and pick up their legs and tackle them. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and they would just look at him, who are you? Hi, I'm Rusty, you know. <laughs> it was great. Um, one event that happened, I believe it was Thursday morning was we were getting ready for the morning service and one of the girls, one of the young camper ladies there, um, for whatever reason she collapsed. 
and it was a it was a scary moment for a while no one said anything and they had all gathered around her and they had her on the ground they moved us all all the campers down to the gym area that they call there and down there the campers started singing it is well with my soul while the while the squad came in we could see him coming in and though it it turned out to not be serious it got a hold of the campers there too and two campers came to Christ because of that incident right there um, but it was just it was awesome to see the campers there they were singing it as well as myself and one of the campers just fell down and started praying and within 30 seconds they had about 50 other campers gathered around there was a big prayer circle praying for the situation um, that, that, that's neat to see among teenagers when you know so many teens are forsaking Christ and <laughs> wow so uh, that was pretty incredible but Lord spoke to my heart every night Friday night was a great message the closing message and he just he preached on you know Paul during the shipwreck and how he had said to the, the jailer to tell the captain to not sail on or or to sail on or whatever the message was but the, jail, the centurion it says okay I'm trying the centurion said it, he believed the captain of the ship over Paul over the man of God and he preached on just listening to the man of God and listening to them and, and not and heeding their message and and but then he challenged us you know as as we bring the message to teens to make sure we're ready and to give them something from the word of God and make sure we're with God we're close to God yeah. they have someone to follow and boy that that hit me that was challenging um, that just told me to you know not take for granted and to, to be as close as I can to Christ because I have I have teenagers that will watch me and need to see Christ in me um, that was great um, and lastly I just want to add that you have not lived until you have eight teenagers in a van with luggage for a five hour drive home I think if it would have been any longer we would have had to have like like straps to hold some people down because it was getting pretty psychotic by the time we got to church but we made it and we're all safe in one piece so. that's great wow that's great isn't it praise the lord wonderful wonderful testimonies <clears throat> all right well let's see let, let's do the announcements first, all right? Um, regular schedule this week, uh, Tuesday night for our soul winning visitation, 6.15 here in the auditorium. Wednesday night is our Bible study, 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. We'll be back in 2 Timothy on uh, Wednesday night. <clears throat> then Friday night is the RU open house down at Gantz Park uh, at 7 o'clock. There's a sign-up sheet downstairs if you can come to that. Hope you come out and uh, join us on Friday night, get kind of a feel for what Reformers Unanimous is all about. And and then Saturday morning, men, don't forget the men's breakfast. That's at 8.15 on Saturday morning. And again, sign up down there in the foyer, and I hope you'll be there for that. And uh, then next Sunday, remember, is our For His Pleasure offering. It'll be over and above what we normally give uh, to, to help us uh, continue on with the renovation and get that done. Uh, we're just going to get some painting done tomorrow, the trim work that's been up. Uh, going to begin to get the room across from the nurseries drywalled and get that uh, taped off and uh, mudded and get it ready to paint so we can get that done and then carpet all of it and uh, get it done and that's going to look very very nice looks good just getting doors up and everything and trim doesn't it and uh, made a difference and uh, we're excited to continue to progress on that and uh, those special offerings help us to continue on and uh, so be praying what the Lord have you to do then I want to say this we um uh, those of you, some of you know, some of you don't know, we are live streaming our services now on the internet. Um, don't, don't miss a service, just see what it's like, okay? But if you're ever at home, 
you can go to our website and click on a link and you go to what it is live stream and you have to you have to it's free but you have to it's free for you we have to pay for the service but uh, you sign up to be a subscriber and you can watch the services live okay and um, <clears throat> the but we pay for that service now we have a YouTube channel okay and uh, if we get a thousand subscribers to our YouTube channel, they will stream, we can stream our services there and it doesn't cost us anything. But we have to have a thousand people become a switch. So you have to go to YouTube, type in Bible Baptist Church Grove City, and then our page will come up and then be a, it's free to subscribe to our page. And then if you will put that out by your media, if you're Facebook or Twitter, whatever you want to put it out on, Google Plus or whatever, uh, you put that out and ask your friends to go there and subscribe. And if we can get up to a thousand, then we can do that. We, they can just go to YouTube channel and they'd see our live services. And uh, that's a, it's a powerful tool, it really is. <clears throat> and a great, great ministry. So help us with that if you can, all right? Uh, if you have any questions about that, you see either Brother Troy or Brother Bob. I told you all I know. <coughs> and uh, that's, that's the extent of my knowledge right there, okay? So uh, they'll, they'll help you out with that, but help us with that. I think it'll be a great, uh, great blessing. We'd love to get to a thousand on that, okay? All right. Well, we have some anniversaries to celebrate. <coughs> uh, we have Pete and Emma Abrams, and we have Chris and Danny Ross. And uh, is Brother Pete not here tonight? Okay, but you're here. But we won't have you come up by yourself, okay? But we'll deliver these to you, all right? <laughs> come on up, Chris and Danny. There you go. How about some pink wrapped flowers? What do you think about that? Good. Danny's getting ready to... Head to Dallas for a big Mary Kay seminar, I think. And uh, you go Tuesday, and then it goes, you come home Saturday. Okay, all right. Be praying for a safe trip there. Got your boot off, and you're ready to go? A lot of walking. Yeah, I know. A lot of walking when you go to those things. But we appreciate the Rosses so much. They work with the Lilies out in the Children's Church. And Brother Chris uh, drives the bus at times, uh, picking up, going home, things like that. And Sunday nights, he drives a short bus and picks folks up and brings them to church. And just does, uh, they do a lot here at Bible Baptist Church. And we appreciate the Rosses. And you celebrated their anniversary, I think, Friday, right? And uh, it's been... I was looking at him, seeing if he knew, but you <laughs> She answered real quick for that, all right? Ten years. Let's sing happy anniversary to them, and uh, for God bless them. And don't forget, it's Pete, it was Pete and Emma's anniversary, too, on the 22nd of July, all right? Let's sing happy anniversary. wondering there looking for a while like you didn't really <laughs> that's great oh that's wonderful marriage is good isn't it and, uh, that's that's a blessing all right well take a minute to see if I have anybody visiting this evening anybody here tonight for the first time looking around I don't think I see anybody for the first time got some second timers uh, here tonight and uh, good to have you here and uh, very good let's sing another song together then will you take your songbook there turn to number 11 number 11 he is mine number one one let's sing that together tonight what about on that first together long before the fall of man long before the fall of man god designed a master plan he extends the sinner for the sinless one. Jesus left his throne on high, came to earth to bleed and die. He said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Oh, 
241 together marvelous grace of our loving Lord grace greater than our sin let's stand together once more as we sing on that first together marvelous grace of our loving Lord grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt yonder on Calvary's mouth out for there where the blood of the Lamb was filled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Amen. Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last standard together. infinite matchless grace let's sing that last together marvelous infinite matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe you that are longing to see his face will you this moment his grace Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our 
sin. One more time on that chorus. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace at will pardon and cleanse with him. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. All right, you may be seated. Great singing tonight. Ushers will come. They'll receive our offering now this evening. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on our offering tonight. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. We pray your blessing on the offering this evening, Lord, that we'll uh, give out of a cheerful heart. And Lord, of all that you've done for us and given for us. And I pray you'll bless the giving tonight. Multiply it. Use it for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 your Bible this evening, if you would, for our scripture reading. <clears throat> I'd like you to turn to Matthew chapter 6, if you would, please. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to read verses 19 through 23. Verses 19 through 23. We'll read these verses responsibly, as we normally do. And also, as is our custom, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, we'll begin together on verse 19. I'll read 20. We'll alternate till we end together on verse 23. Beginning on verse 19, Matthew chapter 6. Ready? Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where wrath and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. And let's pray, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of these scriptures here this evening. And Father, we would pray and ask you to continue to work in our hearts and prepare us for the message from your word this evening. Thank you so much, Lord, for the wonderful testimonies tonight from our teenagers. Thank you, Lord, for... Camp Victory and Brother Griffiths and his staff there and for their yieldedness to thee, Lord, that you use them in a great way there to touch the lives of young people throughout the summer. And Lord, we pray your hand of blessing to continue upon them there. Thank you for what you did in the lives of our young people that went down this week. And Lord, we're thankful for the wonderful music and the good spirit here this evening. Lord, I pray now you'll bless this special continue to use it Lord to prepare our hearts to hear your voice in Jesus name we ask it Amen, Amen. Yes. 
stood up in heaven and he looked down through time and he saw all that waited ahead. He knew that a stable was where he Thank you so much for coming and being a sacrifice for our sin on the cross. Thank you so much, God, for so loving us that you would send your only begotten Son. Lord, we realize we're only gathered together here tonight because you came. Had you not come, we'd have no reason to be here this evening. And we would have all, we would have all men be most miserable. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. And thank you for so great salvation that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We love you, and we want you to speak to us now. Lord, it's already been a wonderful service. And yet, Father, we desire to open your word and to look at it once again and to receive the truth that you have for us. We believe this word in front of us tonight, Lord, is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our hearts. And so God, I pray that you help each one to listen carefully tonight to what we believe is the only book you've ever written. But Lord, we would yield ourselves to thy Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, speak to hearts tonight as only you can do. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Now, I'm aware of the time, all right? So you don't have to be, all right? I know what time it is, and uh, I'm not going to keep you long. Um, long is a relative term, but I'm not going to keep you long, and uh, I, I am aware of your time, and I'll, I'll be aware of that as we go through the message. I'll, I may go a little bit quicker. Uh, you just listen a little bit quicker, and uh, we'll, we'll be okay. All right, but I want to turn your attention there to your Bible in Matthew 6, and Jesus is, most of you know, this is known as what's called the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7 of Matthew, and tonight I'm going to do a, a little bit different. I'm, I'm calling this not the Sermon on the Mount, but the Sermon on the Amount. There we go. The Sermon on the Amount, okay? 
and uh, that's part of the Sermon on the Mount. And, you know, we like to divide life up into, into two categories, the material and the spiritual. But Jesus never did that. He never made that distinction. In fact, <clears throat> he often taught that our attitude toward the material revealed our spirituality. And it, it, it showed us what our values really were. You know, when, when we talk about, uh, if you want to be serious about something, somebody says, yeah, we'll put your money where your mouth is. What do you mean? You want to be serious about it? Then you put your money on it. That shows you're serious about it. See, it shows what, 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 what things are tied to. You've seen people attach the wallet, you know, and you see this big chain come out of their pocket and attaching it to their belt loop. Well, God says, you know what? The wallet is not attached to your belt loop. The wallet's attached to your heart, to your innermost being, to your affections. In fact, if we can just look at your, uh, used to say, you can look at someone's checkbook. I'm not sure many people have those anymore. I guess I, I, I have a checkbook and I, and, and I write the Lord's check on Sunday. That's about the only check that gets written anymore. Everything else is electronic or with the card or something's automatic. And, and it used to be the end of it. How many remember when you sat down once a month and you wrote out all the checks? You remember that? And uh, it, some of you still might do that. I don't know. But it uh, used to be that and balance things out. And used to say, you know, you could look at your checkbook for the last 30 days or the last three months or six months. You know what? I can tell you where your heart is. If I looked at your bank account or I saw what your purchases were, Oh, over the last few months, you know what? I could tell you where your heart is. Yes, sir. Because I, your heart's where your money is. Your heart's where your money is. That's not original with me. Jesus said that. Amen. Jesus is the one who said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You see, the, the Bible, let, let, me, let me also say this. Wait a minute. That there's, no, there's nothing in the Bible that exalts poverty. Okay? Uh, don't equate being poor with being spiritual. Okay, that's not what that's not what Jesus taught either. Okay, don't don't think that well to have things or to have riches. No, some of the some of the wealthiest men in the Bible were godly Christians. Abraham was a wealthy man. Job was a wealthy man, but they were wonderful godly men, godly Christians. In fact, hold your finger there in Matthew six. We're going to come back to that, but look back in First Timothy chapter six. Paul instructing Timothy, <clears throat> the ministry, we're studying 2 Timothy on Wednesday nights, and Paul instructing this uh, young man in the faith here about preaching. And he tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, notice with me verse 17, would you please? 1 Timothy 6, 17, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Amen. Now say, listen, it's not wrong for you to have things, but if things have you, then you're turned around. If you get to where you're trusting in those things and not trusting in the living God, then God can take those things away from you and, and get your focus back where it needs to be. But God, God giveth us all things richly to enjoy. So there's nothing wrong with those things as long as you keep the fact that God comes first. Matthew 6, later on in this same passage, he's going to say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Make sure you keep things in perspective. So the Lord never magnified poverty. The question that everybody has to ask, and especially American Christians have to ask, is this, do I own my possessions or do my possessions own me? Do I own things or do things own me? More about that in just a little bit. <clears throat> Look at Luke chapter 12. Would you please turn your Bible over to Luke 12. Jesus speaking again along these lines about what life's all about. Notice what Jesus said here in Luke chapter 12. What the context here is, uh, two brothers are fighting over the inheritance that their father had left them. And he says, tell my brother, Jesus, talk to my brother and let him split the inheritance with me. 
Jesus said, who made me a judge or divide over you? And look at verse 15 of Luke 12. And he said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Life isn't about the things we have. I was reading this week an article. Um, it caught my attention. It was on Yahoo about habits of wealthy people. They said there's, I think it was six or seven things he said that wealthy, this guy who studied people with, with wealth, and I forget how he defined that, and um, that, that they do that people who are poor don't do. Now that well, caught my attention. I said, I wonder what they are. And so I began to read through that, but it was interesting. One of those things just says they, they value relationships more than they do things. Wasn't that interesting? Now this isn't a Christian article, you understand. This is just a secular article. It talks about how the value of their relationships, because then they use those relationships in their work and in their business and in their contacts and, and the way to do, they, 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 you might call it they, they networking or whatever, but they value those relationships. And he's trying to understand, they, they've come to realize that life isn't about the abundance of the things I possess. Life isn't about whoever dies with the most toys wins. Nothing could be further from the truth. They're getting ready in our neighborhood next Saturday to have the big neighborhood garage sale thing. When they put those signs up and I see those signs, the first thought comes to my mind is, I'm getting out of my neighborhood early that day and staying away. <laughs> That's my thing. But, but it's, it's a time when everybody takes their excess stuff and tries to trade it with everybody else. Everybody trade, you know, and then you end up with all, all this stuff. That, anyway, you know. It, and, and that's where we are. We have so much stuff we can't keep in our house. We've got to go pay $100 a month or whatever it is to keep it in a storage facility. Because we can't cram all the stuff in our house. So we've got to take a vehicle that costs ten or $20,000 and keep it outside in the driveway in the elements so we can keep $700 or $1,000 worth of junk and stuff in our garage. It's sad, isn't it? You, you, you think that maybe our life is all about our possessions and the things that we possess. You understand that <clears throat> some things can be good or they can become bad depending on how they're used. Music. Music can be a good thing used for the glory of God. It also can become a bad thing and used for Satan and for his purposes. It all depends on how you want to use it. The Sex is a gift from God. Used in the boundaries of marriage, it's a wonderful thing. Used outside the boundaries of marriage, it's a very immoral thing. Nothing that will bring you happiness. The internet can be a very evil thing. But it can be a very good thing. It can be a very wonderful thing for proclaiming the gospel. And getting the gospel into areas of the world where it's forbidden to go. But they can't shut down getting through the internet. Money's that way. It can be a good thing. Or it could be an evil thing. The Bible never says money's evil. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Don't misquote the verse. So understand that it can be used for good or evil. But I, I, I want you to look tonight in Matthew 6, if you'll go back to that passage, and briefly let's look real quick about what money can take a, take a toll on in our lives. How can money affect us? Well, first of all, Jesus said it affects our heart. It has an effect on our heart. Verse number 19, Lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. Lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now when Jesus said don't lay up, it means don't stockpile it. Don't hoard it. Nothing, nothing wrong with having a savings account. Nothing wrong with having an inheritance. Nothing wrong with having retirement. Nothing wrong with those things. But don't just make it your goal to stockpile money. Yeah. 
No, it's it's funny <coughs> listening. I, I told you before on Sunday morning <clears throat> when I get up and take a shower, I listen to radio and and there's a program on about financial thing. The financial guru of Central Ohio. Uh, I think it's Phil Taylor. That's why I always think of Brother Taylor from BPS, you know. But Greg Taylor, I think that's his name. Didn't you hear him on a Sunday morning? Some of you guys do. And they're always talking about, oh, retirement. Oh, the people are always worried about, will I outlive my money? Will my money make it as long as I make it? And will I run out? And what's going to happen when taxes hit me? And what should I do about this? And, and all the money worries that they worry about when it comes to retirement. And being so concerned. Now, in Jesus' day, <clears throat> wealth was found in three areas and it's discovered in this passage as well but it was the amount of clothing you possessed the amount of food you had stored up and the amount of gold you owned those were the three ways that they judged wealth in Jesus day and the Lord is simply trying to clear something up saying that if you just because you have a lot doesn't necessarily mean it's God's blessing upon you. And if you don't have a lot, then God's not blessing you. By the way, that's a theology that's being preached today. It's called the name it and claim it theology. The, 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 someone else said it's, it's blab it and grab it, but uh, I'm not sure which it is, but it's not biblical. It's not biblical. And uh, God's, not in, not, God's not in the uh, he's not in the, the, the genie business. Right. Where you're not a magic Amen. lamp in the genie and you rub it when you need something good to happen. Uh, that's not where God is and that's not what God's about. Truth is, more people have been ruined by prosperity than been ruined by poverty. More people have been ruined by prosperity than ruined by poverty. And that's why the church has always, uh, the church has always gotten on with more, quote, poor people than they have rich people. That's just fact. Did you know that Jesus never sought out a rich person? Right. Study the Gospels. Right. Not one time did he ever... Did he have some rich people come? Yes, he did. They came to him. Yeah. Amen. Joseph Arimathea, whose tomb he borrowed, he came to Jesus. Right. Nicodemus was a wealthy man. He came to see Jesus at night. Amen. He never sought the wealthy. Uh, he always... Hey, when they came, he accepted them. And by the way, when they come, we accept them. But that's not who we target. So he says, who's your target group? Who's your church, uh, you know, your marketing? And who's your target group? And, and listen, I, I say, if they have a pulse, we target Amen. That's, that's who we're going after. Amen. Doesn't matter what their age is. Doesn't matter what their bank account is. Doesn't matter what their skin color is. Doesn't matter what their background. Doesn't matter anything about that. If their heart is beating, we want them. <clears throat> so the Lord is trying to let us know that riches or our money affects our heart. You know, a preacher was talking about he had a member come to him and said, I started tithing when I made $200 a week. He said, it wasn't hard to put $20 in the offering plate. He said, but now he said, I'm up to making $5,000 a week. And it's hard to put $500 in the offering plate. I, I really need help. And so the preacher said, all right, let's kneel down and pray. And he knelt down and began to pray. He said, Lord, my brother is having trouble giving the 10% that belongs to you in the offering. And I pray you take him back to those days when he only made $200 a week. So it'll be easier for him to give his $20 in the offering. And the fellow jumped up off his feet and he said, I'll tie. I'll tie. It's okay. Huh? Maybe that's what it takes. I don't know. But you understand, it's, it's a heart issue. It's not a money issue. When the stock market crashed back in the 20s, 29, remember people you read about, people jumping out the windows, taking their life. You know why? Because what they thought life was all about was gone. So they had to just, what, why live? And they took their life. How sad that that's all they had to live for was possessions. How quick your possessions can be gone. 
how quick they can they can go how 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 quickly that thing you couldn't live without you're selling at the garage sale now two years later and yet we had to have it think about it you know why because it gets our affections things don't last and I'll tell you this things don't satisfy you ever think about that if money satisfies how much does it take to satisfy Remember, wasn't it Rockefeller when asked him how much how much money is enough? And he said just just a dollar more. Always always just a little bit more. Because it never it never satisfies. It's it's some of those one of the principles in our you we learn is that, that you can't satisfy um, uh, fleshly uh, desire with fleshly you know you, you can't fight a fleshly appetite by indulging in it. You, you can't you, you, you think well if I just if I just had this much money man then I'd be happy no you know what you get that much money and boy the thirst and the desire for more money comes on you and you want more money it just grows that appetite just grows so, well I'll, I'll, I'm addicted to, to potato chips but if I just have one then I'll, I'll be satisfied no you can't eat just one you want more that appetite grows and it gets and it, and, it, and it increases. That's the way it is with money. Money, it just grows and, and you get preoccupied with that and you never feel it's enough. A wealthy farmer had thousands of acres of land in his county and someone said, you must have set a goal long ago to own all the land in the county. And the farmer said, no, I never had that goal. All I ever wanted was this to, all I ever wanted was to own the land next to mine. <laughs> and you keep buying it up. Now here's here's what the Lord is interested in what the Lord is saying. He isn't saying don't lay up. He said, I'm redirecting where you lay it up. He said, Don't lay it up, don't stop part on earth. He says, but in the contrary, what did he say? Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Don't stockpile it here on earth. Stockpile it in heaven. He's saying, hey, just switch banks. Don't put it in the bank here. Put it in the bank up there. He's saying, just switch the place you're depositing. Switch banks. That's all Jesus is telling them to do. Burglar proof, rust proof, decay proof, corrupt proof. The bank is, is impregnable. And you don't need the FDIC to insure anything. Every time the offering plate comes by and you put the offering in, you ought to say, I'll see you in heaven. I'll see you in heaven. It's talk. Money talks to you. You talk back to you. I'll see you in heaven. You, you, you cannot outgive God, and that is true here, and that's true for eternity. Amen. A lot of people here at this place, you give, you give a lot, not just of the, not just of increase, but you give your time your abilities and whether it's music ministry or Sunday school or children's church or bus ministry or uh, nursery time whatever it may be uh, vacation Bible school big days passing out flyers work days and, and getting stuff done uh, people give you your time and listen there's not anybody that gives of their time gives of their talents gives of their abilities but that God takes note of that and that's all material I believe in my heart when you do it with your motive out of a love for Jesus Christ and a love for your Savior that God puts that material up in heaven and it's not wood, hay, and stubble, my friend. It's gold and silver and precious stones that he puts up there. You get to heaven, you know, it, don't get to heaven. That, don't, you won't be able to not send anything ahead and get to heaven and complain about what you're living in. The Lord just may say to you, I did the best I could with the material you sent up here. You may just have to say that. Thinking about these buildings and thinking about the fellow who is here this morning from 
back in 1974 when Pastor Rock first came. And to come back 39 years later. And he talked about, well, same spirit in the building. God's still working. Amen. 39 years later. Amen. I think of the people who have built who built this building. Yes. Even built the building that we're remodeling downstairs. That's right. Folks who sacrificed to get that fellowship yes. all built. Where children are hearing the word of God every week. Amen. Where folks here are still hearing the word of God and folks are getting saved and lives are being changed. You know, understand? You understand what what they invested back then is still paying them dividends. They're still enjoying what they get. Anything they stockpiled here has long been gone. Long been gone. But what they laid up there is still there. Still moving on. So Jesus said. The treasure affects our heart. Okay, number two. And only had 27 points, so we'll, we'll get to them quickly. Number two, things not only take, a, he said that it, it, it has an effect on our heart, which are, is, is the emotions, but it also has an effect on our mind, which is our perceptions. Notice verse 22 and 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if the eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? You know, the eye is the window that lets the light into the body. Amen. And, and the amount of light that comes in depends on the singleness of our eye. Single simply means healthy. Evil means it's blurred. You don't see things. All depends on your vision, depends on your perception. Are you spiritually minded or are you materially minded? How do, you, how do you view things? How do you look at things? How's your perception of things? He says when you're spiritually minded, you'll see things in perspective. You'll see things with eternal values in view. You see, when you... When you when you're not focused on eternity and you're just focused on now, your vision gets blurred and your perceptions change. I was reading about a, a man who was in Atlanta, Georgia years ago and he looked in the phone book. For some of you who don't know what that is, that's a, it's a book that used to have numbers in there when people had these things that was in their house and they rang. And uh, anyway, well, it's another message, I guess. Uh, some of the kids don't know what a real telephone is, I don't think. So, um, and he looked in the phone book, and he said, and it, something caught his attention. It said, it said, uh, what did it say? Let me write it down. I wrote it down. I want to make sure I don't mess this up. There, that was Church of God Grill. That caught his attention. Church of God Grill. So he called him up, and sure enough, fellow answered the phone. Church of God Grill, may I help you? He said, that sure is an unusual name. How did you get to be called Church of God Grill? He said, well, you know, years ago, we were just a little mission church down here. And to help pay the bills, we started serving chicken dinners after church on Sunday. And folks liked them so well, and they bought them up, and so we started, we shortened the service some and started serving more meals and pretty soon we just quit having service all together and just kept serving chicken dinners and uh, the rest is history. You see what happens when you get blurred vision and you start looking at things materially? You know what happens? God says eventually everything gets dark and how great is that darkness? You begin not only not see things the way you should, boy, the darkness comes in, and man, it'll get so dark. You, you won't, you, you'll end up doing things you never ever thought you'd do. Being, going places you never thought you'd go. The darkness will be very dark. Completely without light. Light is spiritual direction, spiritual guidance. You'll have none. You'll have none in your life. All because of the wrong perception. If the whole body be evil, then, then the darkness comes in. And that's what, hey, 
from Elvis Presley to Jessica Simpson. That's exactly what happened. They started out in church. Now how great was that darkness when they begin blurred with their vision because of material things, because of money. It's tied to your perceptions. Sometimes people think they, they don't see things properly. It's, 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 it's because God, it, it's attached to your wallet, attached to your possessions, attached to your money. So it takes a toll on our emotions, takes a toll on our perceptions, our mind, but also thirdly, it, takes, it has a toll on our will, which are our directions, our decisions that we make. Jesus said in verse 24, no man can serve two masters. He'll either hate the one and love the other or hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Serve there. When you serve one or the other is, is the word of literally being a slave. And you're going to be a slave to one or a slave to the other. Owned by one or owned by the other. One of them is going to be the boss. He said you won't be able to serve both. And so you've got to decide who am I going to serve? I like Joshua saying, choose you this day whom you'll serve. Yeah. Yeah. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Making a decision. A man was walking down the street in Chicago wearing one of them sandwich boards. It's read on the front, I'm a fool for Christ. People laughed at him until they read the back of the sandwich board which said, whose fool are you? Yeah. Amen. 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 That's good. You're a fool for somebody. Are you a fool for something? Amen. I want to be a fool for Christ. Amen. Most people get the idea like the farmer did who had two calves. One was solid and one was spotted. He told his wife he felt led to raise them and then give the profit from one of them to the work of the Lord. She said, that's a great idea. And she asked which one. He said, it don't matter. Well, a few days later, he came in and he said, Honey, I've got some bad news. She said, What's that? He said, The Lord's calf just died. <laughs> you understand? That's just like the little girl running to Sunday school. Her mom had given her two quarters. One quarter to put in the offering and one quarter to get an ice cream cone her way home from church. And she was running and she ran, she tripped and she fell and she dropped one of the quarters and she watched it roll and drop right into the sewer grate. And she said, well, Lord, there went your quarter. That's how we get. Something comes up, an unexpected expense, and we say, well, Lord, I can't tithe now. Can't, can't give you your money now. Don't we do the same thing? There goes your tithe, Lord seems like the Lord always be the first one to get tossed out of the mix. Impacts the direction of our life. You know, Lot, Lot became a wealthy man because of Abraham. And, and he became so prosperous and had so much cattle, there began to be a little strife between the herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abraham about where they ought to graze and whose land it is and who's getting the best fields. And there was strife and so much so that the people in the land were, were, were seeing the family argue. Nothing worse than, than God's people that strife with one another and the world watching them fight. That's a, what a poor testimony that is. Remember Abraham went to him and he said they're, they're not, not, not going to be strife between us. And, and instead of Abraham having to go on and say you choose which way you want to go Lot should have said hey Abraham I'm with you That's right. you cut me down downsize me do whatever you want to do but I'm sticking with you God has blessed me because I'm with you and I'm not leaving whatever we got to do to make that happen let's make that happen but he did you know the course and Lot chose him the well watered plains of Sodom because it was good for cattle. Wasn't good for family. Wasn't good for children. Wasn't good for his marriage, was it? All that was the wrong decision. Never thought it was a good place for his family. He just thought it was a good place for business. 
listen to me, you never make a decision based on business. You make a decision based on the will of God. God may move you, but you ought to move because it's God's will to move. Not just because somebody offered you a job where there's more money. I've used this illustration before. What would you think of the pastor? If I got up on a Sunday night and I'd say, folks, you know, the First Baptist Church of, you know, uh, uh, Nowheresville uh, has come to me and they, they, they offered me three times the amount of money you're paying me and they're giving me a nice house to live in, going to give me a, a brand new car to drive and so we're, we're going to be leaving and taking that church. What would you think of your pastor? So, what did you say? Uh -oh. No, somebody said, I want to be your assistant. <laughs> Is that you, Bob? Yeah. Did, did they need an assistant? Pastor? Yeah. Wouldn't you say, preacher, what are you in, you in this for money? You're in this just as good as you can get out of it materially? You shouldn't take a church based on what they're going to pay you. Well, if that's the case, we'd never come to Bible Baptist, would we? Huh? I mean, come on, they were offering us $400 a week. How could you pass that up? Amazing. And, and the Lord takes care of us. But listen, that, that you would say, no, preacher, you can't take a decision based on money. Guess what? Neither should you. Neither should you. You do it because it's God's will. I've seen it. I've been in this thing 31 years. I've seen the families up and move for a job and then call back and say, man, we haven't found a church to go to. We just can't find anywhere. And end up dropping out the church. What usually happens is after years, mom and dad realize their error and realize their mistake and they say, man, we come back. And they come back and say, man, we're coming back. We're getting right with God. We know we ought to be serving God. And mom and dad get back in and they start serving God. But the children don't. They lost those kids. They never get them back in. It's a heartache they carry and a burden they carry with them. Because of the decision. Uh, don't you think God ever, and don't you think he ever thought at night, what have I done? Why did I ever leave Abraham? Look at where I am. Look at what's happened. He vexed his righteous soul, the Bible says. He had to have times where he was a miserable guy regretting the decisions he'd made. Make no mistake, he was wealthy in Sodom. But when he left, he left with nothing. <laughs> he left with nothing. It all came down in fire and brimstone. Everything he, he thought was important in life and was he based his decision on was gone in an instant. You see, when we fall in love with things, they, they grab our heart. They grab our emotions. They take a toll on our perceptions and the yes. way we see things. Right. And then they will affect our decisions and the direction our life takes yes. based on those things. That's why, G that's why the scripture says in Colossians 3, Paul said, if he then be risen with Christ, seek those things, seek those things which are oh, above. Yeah. See, but Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. We're seeking to set your affection on things above, not on things above. Listen, that's where Christ is. And we're running our race looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Not things. Not here. When you, when you pray about what do I do about next Sunday, what do I do for a special offering? Don't look here. Say, what wilt thou have to do? Amen. What do you want me to do? Amen. If you just look here, you know what you say? <laughs> Man, we, we can't do anything. We got nothing. What do we got around here to do? Hmm? See? Because you've letting these things affect your heart, That's right. your mind, Amen. and your direction. Yes, your decision. Yeah. And Jesus said, don't do that. Think about what you're laying up there. And that's the direction to go. Amen? Amen. Amen.
I don't care about leaving the world as a prince or a, as a rich person. I'm more concerned about what treasures laid up there. Yes, amen. That's all that's going to matter. Amen. You know, when it when it's over, it's not wrong to leave an inheritance to your children. But listen, there's so many more things you can leave them other than money. That's right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Leave them godliness. You leave them amen. a faith in God. Hey, amen. leave them a church to go to. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Leave them that legacy of your group. My my father-in-law don't know how long he has to live I hope Jesus will come we'll all go Amen. don't know Amen. as we found out with the bus accident there yesterday in Indiana you know what none of us know the effect that lady had at camp that collapsed you know I'm sure that affected those teenagers like man you don't know anybody can keel over we don't know but if the Lord, if he tarries long and goes on long and paying for the care, it's not, it's not uh, the, the money that they've saved up through life for this time, it'll probably be gone. But what Don Lesh leaves his family has nothing to do with money. But his godliness, his faithfulness, and his love for the Lord, and his love for his wife and his children and his grandchildren, you can't put a price tag on your right, 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 right. That's what the value Amen. is of what he leaves his family. That's what you want to be. That's what I want. That's what Jesus, I think, is getting at here. The world gets so caught up in all the stuff we have. That's that's what that means you've made it. What kind of car you're driving, or what kind of house you live in, or what kind of label your clothes have on. That's so vain. That's so vain. What is it going to matter when we see Him? What will it matter when we see Christ? Let's be faithful to Him. And ask God what He'd have you do to lay up treasures in heaven and not upon the earth. It's all about the Sermon on the Mount. Let's pray. Shall we? Father, take this truth now this evening. Jesus, thank you for the message and thank you for touching on this and the sermon that you gave here in Matthew and Lord tonight I pray that each of us would look hard at our own own lives and we would ask if you're speaking to us tonight Lord if there's part of our emotions that rebelled at some of the thoughts that were given or we would be willing to admit that our perceptions have been affected by possessions. We see things, we, we've kind of got caught up in what the world view is of things instead of what your view is of things. And Lord, it's affected our decision making and the direction of our life. And tonight, Lord, I pray that all of us would get back in line and get back in vision. And see things the way you desire us to see things. Jesus, help us clearly to see you tonight. We would look at our circumstances, as we said this morning, through our God, who's the God of the circumstances. Lord, we love you tonight. And I pray that as folks look into our finances that you've given to us, they would see what we spend our money on. They would say, this person loves Jesus Christ and loves the work of God. Where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll finish this prayer in just a moment. I wonder how many folks tonight would say, Preacher, God has spoken to my heart about this area of possessions, finances you'd be willing to admit that you know what it does affect the heart it does affect my mind it does affect the emotions the perceptions the the decisions and I really do want God to focus my affection on things above and not on things in the earth and preacher God did prick my heart tonight
that he's dealing with. And please pray for me this evening. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Would you do that? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart. Why don't you respond to him tonight? Just come and kneel down and just say, God, direct, direct me. Yes. Keep my focus where it needs to be. Yes. Let me do and accomplish what you want me to accomplish while I'm here on this earth. And use the finances you give to me to honor and glorify you. Amen. And he'll will. He will. He'll help you. Yes. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing now this invitation time. Lord, I pray that folks whom you've spoken to tonight will respond and do what you're telling them to do in their heart. And Lord, if there's anyone here tonight that has never received Christ as their Savior, that they come this evening and say, I, I need to be born again. Though they're here tonight and are saved and never been baptized, I pray they'd follow you in baptism this evening. If they're saved and they're baptized, and Lord, they, you're leading them to be a part of this church body. Pray that they'd come and say we want to join in and be servants here at Bible Baptist Church. Whatever it is that you're dealing with hearts about, Lord, I, I, I'd ask that folks would be yielded to you. Have your way in these next few moments, please. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist is going to play. As he plays, Bob's going to sing. And God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening. Just ask what he'd have you do. Maybe you pray about next week's giving, next week's offering. And just say, Lord, what do you want us to do? Pray for God to be the need. Would you do that? To him That's right. Pray for him to meet the need. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily.